I'm sure we'd all like to go back in time and save ourselves from embarrassing moments in school hallways or some decisions we'd later regret. Or it would be so cool to go back and see some of your dearest moments, or maybe even further, all the way back to the 17th century to check how people lived then. Imagine seeing what dinosaurs really looked like. Maybe they weren't that scary. Well, okay, they were, you win. Or imagine going back and having lunch with cave people. Hopefully, we wouldn't end up as a meal of a marsupial lion, giant hyena, or some other hungry beast that were wandering around at those times. So, you'd go back, I'd go back, our friends too, everyone would like to take a peek into history. And we would all make such a mess. It would be so chaotic if the whole universe could rewind, let alone each of us individually. What would that even look like? I mean, we're still not sure how it all started with the universe, but luckily, we have some pretty smart people who have offered us different theories. Some say there was really no beginning, and that the universe has always existed. They believe space and time may have merged out of the universe, so we can't actually talk about how it may have been before the Big Bang, since there was no before. Scientists like Newton and Einstein used to think the universe was something static. Then, in the 1920s, people found out that all galaxies were actually moving away from one another. This led to the idea of the Big Bang, a starting point where everything was concentrated in a tiny, dense point called a singularity. And then you go back to the main question again. How did that dense point show up? One theory talks about quantum mechanics. This basically means that even empty space can have tiny particles popping in and out of existence. Maybe that's how the universe got some matter, even when it was very small. Another theory says our universe could be part of something bigger, and there are always new universes popping up. And the idea says these new universes form all the time because of some tiny changes that keep happening. So there could be an infinite number of universes where each decision we make takes us just one way to one reality. Well, you've already heard of the concept of multiverses, right? But this still doesn't tell us how it started. Another option claims that our universe goes through cycles. It doesn't have a definite beginning or end, but instead goes through phases. The cyclic universe theory says that the universe didn't start from nothing but it came from the collision of two special objects called brains. These objects exist in a special kind of space with more dimensions than we can see. When these brains collide, it creates a lot of energy that makes the universe expand. But after some time, it starts to shrink again, like it happens when you squeeze the air out of a balloon. Eventually, the balloon gets small enough to collide with another pair of brains, and the process starts all over again. Either way, maybe someday we'll be able to travel in time. So we'll see what early space looked like, and we might find at least some of the answers. Now NASA has a cool new thing called the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. It can capture really big areas of space relatively quickly. This will help us see how the universe has been transforming since its early days. Now, you'd expect all the things in the universe to be spread out evenly, like a nice smooth soup. But no. Stars gather to form galaxies, and galaxies come together in clusters. And clusters, again, are connected by long strings of something we call dark matter. And in between these strings, there are giant empty spaces. It's like a really big spider web of galaxies with holes in between. And it keeps expanding all the time, we think, because of this mysterious force called dark energy. The Roman Space Telescope will help us find out more about both dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter is like an invisible glue that holds galaxies together. And dark energy is a force that makes the universe expand faster and faster. When light from galaxies that are really far away from us travels through space, there can be things in its path that can bend it with their gravity. It's like having mirrors in a funhouse. This way, scientists can figure out where the mass is located in the universe. This includes dark matter, too, which is especially hard to find since we can't see it because it doesn't give off any light. So, scientists created a simulation based on what we currently know about how galaxies form. 
It shows a patch of the sky that is like 10 times the size of a full moon and contains more than 5 million galaxies. The Roman telescope works together with other telescopes like Hubble and Webb to give us a more complete picture. Hubble sees different types of light, and Webb provides detailed observations. If we didn't have the Roman Space Telescope, and we'd only have to rely on others, we would need hundreds of years to study the space mysteries we're looking at now. And from 2027, with the help of the Roman Space Telescope, we'll be able to take a peek into the past. If you could really go back in time, you wouldn't see giant shiny stars scattered throughout galaxies. You'd find yourself in a sea of plasma, which is basically charged particles. And in this soup, there would be tiny knots, a bit denser than their surroundings. Because of their slightly bigger mass, they'd have a bit stronger gravitational pull. With time, these knots would grow and form stars and galaxies. And if we were to rewind and start the universe all over again, the atoms would probably merge into random variations, which means we'd get some completely different galaxies, stars, and even our solar system. It formed around 4.5 billion years ago, after a big cloud of space gas and dust collapsed because a nearby star exploded. When this cloud collapsed, it formed a spinning disk of material called a solar nebula. In the middle of this disk, the material came together and created a very important object for life on our planet, the Sun. The Sun is gigantic. It was made up of more than 99% of the stuff from the cloud. In the outer parts of the disk, the material started to clump together too. These clumps crashed into each other and got bigger and bigger. Some of them became round because of their gravity. Those turned into planets, dwarf planets, and big moons. But not everything became a planet. Some pieces remained small and formed the asteroid belt. Other small leftover pieces became asteroids, comets, and meteoroids. That's how our space system and everything in it, including our Earth, came to be. Now, maybe in this new version, there would be more planets with life on them, or we'd be completely different. Maybe we'd live on a planet closer to the Sun which means we'd need better protection from the heat so life could thrive. Maybe Earth would be giant, or in a different scenario, as small as our moon. Maybe humans would have a completely different shape, or be not human at all. There's something interesting in physics called chaos theory. It's all about studying things that seem really random or unpredictable, even though they actually follow certain rules. It's like when you play a game and you think the outcome is random but there are actually specific reasons why things happen the way they do. It occurs when you play pinball. The ball bounces around in different directions. Even though we understand how gravity and the force of collisions work in the game, it's still really hard to predict exactly where the ball will end up. A tiny change, like hitting the ball a little bit harder or softer, can make a big difference in where it goes.